नमस्कार माय डियर फ्रेंड्स वी हैव ए ऑटोमोटिव पावर सप्लाई सिस्टम हियर सो इन दिस पावर सप्लाई सिस्टम दिस इज ए डीसी डीसी कन्वर्टर ओके एंड इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी हैव ट्राइड चेंजिंग फ्रॉम 48 वोल्ट इनपुट टू 12 वोल्ट आउटपुट विथ वन एम्पियर रेटिंग ओके एंड वन मोर इज 12 वोल्ट टू फाइव वोल्ट आउटपुट विथ फाइव हंड्रेड मिली एम्पियर्स रेटिंग सो दिस इज सोल्यूशन फॉर योर इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स हाइब्रिड व्हीकल्स ओके और सेवरल यू नो लाइक ऑटोमोटिव सिस्टम्स और कमर्शियल व्हीकल्स ओके दिस सिस्टम इज वेरी वेरी पावरफुल बिकॉज दिस टू आर लाइक ऑटोमोटिव आईसीज ओके सो दिस आईसी इज ऑल्सो ऑटोमोटिव विच इज एल टी एट सिक्स वन नाइन एंड वन मोर इज टेकन फ्रॉम टेक्सास इंस्ट्रूमेंट विच इज टी पी एस सेवन बी डबल एट सो दिस इज द आई सी दैट इज यूज सो दिस इज वेरी पावरफुल यू नो लाइक मॉडल विच इज वेरी इजी टू डिजाइन सो वी हैव लाइक फोर्टी एट वोल्ट इनपुट This is the DC-DC converter, okay, which is actually a switching regulator, buck regulator, buck converter, and this output is giving you 12 volt, 1 ampere or 1.2 ampere max, okay, and this 12 volt is also taken at the input here, and this has been used as a linear regulator to give you output of 5 volt with 500 milli amperes. So this is kind of a premium solution with very high cost. Uh, not very high cost a nominal cost uh, but this is very good model which we have designed and the input is having very nice you know like connector which is going to be having a v input and ground and output with uh, two connectors are there one is 12 volt output is there and one more is 5 volt output is there in our models okay so this is your 5 volt output and this is your 12 volt output got it So we'll try to understand the de design and detail about this particular uh, schematic. Okay, so as you can see, uh, we have the product detail page. So if you open this product detail page, will open with this. Uh, that is there from analog devices. We have the data sheet link as well. I'll post this particular you know details in the comment box, and then we have the description. You can see this particular IC can take up to 60 volt input, so it is very suitable. very much suitable with 48 volt even 24 volt input it is very much suitable and around 12 volt system also it is very much suitable okay it can give you 1.2 amperes of output current with synchronous monolithic buck regulator right now if you see some of the features you can see it has a very wide input voltage range as i just mentioned it is having 3 volt to 60 volt it is very a uh, small you know like a uh, uh, iq current that is quiescent current okay and it can work from 300 kilohertz to 2.2 megahertz so if you want to reduce the size of your inductor uh, you can increase the working frequency okay so frequency setting is also available so in my design uh, the frequency setting is around uh, 700 kilohertz that is optimal if you want you can reduce the size of your inductor by increasing the frequency of operation and the dropout is very very small which is 350 360 millivolt at 0.5 ampere that is not a problem it has a power good flag it has internal soft starts and compensation okay it has very low emi okay and it is qualified with ac q100 that is for automotive applications okay and this is very good package as well like it is having msop package whose uh, you know like leads are like outside so this is the one of the best ic that i have utilized if you see some of the applications it can be used in 12 volt automotive systems it can be used in 12 volt and 24 volt commercial vehicles it can be used also in 48 volt electric and hybrid hybrid vehicles so these days electric and hybrid hybrid vehicles are coming up with 48 volt input okay so there this is much suitable okay lt8619 if you see uh, a very a small application circuit that is given in the data sheet itself <coughs> so it has a 5 volt output with 1.2 ampere step con down converter so you have 6 to 60 volt input and we have a 5 volt output with 1.2 ampere current i'll tell you how to design complete circuits <coughs> like what should be the input capacitor what should be the output capacitor how power good up, you know like is being designed what is the steps of designing <coughs> this particular inductor values 
what is the B BST uh, you know like uh, power <coughs> BST power capacitor okay and then we have uh, internal voltage regulator okay and we have RT which is going to set your oscillation frequency as I told you that I have designed exactly same uh, 700 kilohertz right now let us see the efficiency curve so if you see the data sheet you will see <coughs> that it has given you three inputs like 48 volt 24 volt and 12 volt the solid lines are the efficiencies okay so the red color is 48 volt input efficiency which is more than 80 percent uh, for more than one ampere rating right no sorry one milliampere rating okay so basically if you from one milliampere to around uh, 1.2 amperes that is 1000 milliamperes you have efficiency more than 80 percent if your input is little lesser just like a 24 volt then it is its efficiency is increasing and it is going beyond 90 percent for uh, 12 volt input systems okay the dotted lines are showing you the power uh, you know like loss so power loss is maximum around one watt okay so that is not a problem at all so this is very good suitable for our design <coughs> Now let us talk about the block diagram. So if you see the block diagram, uh, you can understand that we have an able pin, we have synchronization pin, RT pin which is set for frequency and this is your power good. Okay. This is the output which where it is SW pin, we have ground pin, we have uh, feedback settings so to, to set the value of our output voltage. Okay. This FB pin actually used for setting the output voltage which is going to be value of R1 and R2 which will tell you how to calculate them. <coughs> Similar to that we have an able uh, uh, that is under lock uh, under voltage lockout or over voltage lockout using this R3 and R4 okay. So if you want you can utilize them otherwise you can directly connect it to input if you don't need any under voltage lockout operations okay. So that also we'll see in the design detail. Coming back to the ordering information, so uh, if you want to have a automotive grade uh, parts, then you can take up this particular pin number, I mean part number, which is LT8619 EMSE, okay, or IMSE. So basically, these two are available in abundance, these two. So these two devices, which is there without W part, which is non automotive part or lead free finish only. So these two are more than enough even to be used in automotive systems okay but if you need automotive compliance you have to go ahead only with this and if you need a fixed uh, regulator then dash 5 you can go this is 5 volt regulator directly with you so we have used only the uh, automotive part or non-automotive non part uh, for adjustable regulation uh, we have not used 5 volt regulators okay Now coming back to the pin configuration so as you can see uh, we have DD package okay so DD package you can see it has 10 pin package and MSOP package which is 16 pin package so our device used was uh, this one okay so we wanted to have external uh, pins that's the reason we have used MSOP package okay coming back to the other parts so let me just quickly tell you what are the different pins here so let me just quickly make it little bigger so that you can see it properly okay so pin number one you can see this is <coughs> no connection pin this is input pin and this is also no connection pin this is enable pin this is RT which is going to be uh, used for setting the frequency of operation this is power good indication which will tell you the voltage output is within the range or if it is uh, beyond the range like uh, very less or very high then it will give you low so that you will understand that output is not correct okay and this is synchronization pin which will be used for giving you the you know like uh, uh, I mean uh, <coughs> frequency from outside like suppose you have you want to have a clock frequency outside uh, then that will be synchronized through this pin we have ground then we have FB out pin which will be used for uh, setting up the uh, voltage settings okay 
and then we have bias pin internal regulator pin and then again in nc pin is there then we have bst pin and sw pin which will be used for your output with a inductors so this was all about the pin configuration now let us talk about the feedback circuit uh, design so feedback circuit design you can see that we have r1 and r2 so these values can be designed with r1 is equal to r2 times v out by 0.8 minus 1 so 0.8 is the voltage at this particular uh, fb pin and in that way you can design your particular output okay so i have utilized for 12 volt settings so 12 volt so you can keep 12 volt at the output so 12 by 0 0.8 minus 1 and keep your r2 value some assumed value accordingly you will have your r1 values understood now let us uh, talk about how we can set the switching frequency okay so there are several uh, rt values that is already given in the data sheet like let's say if you want to work with uh, 300 kilohertz or 400 kilohertz or 500 kilohertz so a uh, calculated value of rt is given okay so i have utilized 700 kilohertz that is 0.7 megahertz so 66.5 kilo ohm is sufficient if you want to have uh, you know like uh, any frequency of operation other than this then you can put your frequency of operation here and you will get your particular rt values okay if you do not want to use this particular formula then you can take a particular formula i mean uh, uh, value from this as well so let us say you want to work with one kilo uh, i mean one megahertz so one megahertz correspondingly you can come down and you can see it is just around 45 kilo ohm so you can see for one kilohertz it is 45 kilo ohm right 45.3 kilo ohm understood if you want to use another one then you can go ahead with this so it will be giving you around how much point point uh, five megahertz that is uh, 100 kilohertz around so 100 kilohertz it will tell you point five megahertz or something 95 kilohertz exactly so you better use the formula to calculate your rt values for any switching frequency okay coming back to next part uh, we are going to have a inductor selection so inductor selection is very important okay so you can have a good choice with l is equal to 2 times v out plus vsw bottom divided by fosc okay so what it does is you can you can start with this particular formula this is not the exact value of l okay value of inductor so you can see uh, for 12 volt it is coming around 35 mega uh, 35 micro henry as the uh, first value okay so if you wish to you can uh, start with around this value or you can have little lower values as well or uh, as well as higher values based on the uh, you know like understanding that we will have so i have designed 33 micro henry uh, value and rest other formulas are not required right now here <coughs> Coming back to the input capacitors, so input capacitor if you want you can utilize ceramic capacitors from 2.2 micro henry to 10 micro henry uh, sorry 2.2 micro farad to 10 micro farad ceramic capacitors of X7R or X5R type okay. So I, I always try to utilize X7R but if you have to have very high voltage rating or something like that at that time you will not be having uh, X7R available at that time you have to utilize X5R but X5R uh, like rating is little bit lower so you can see x7r is bit higher uh, you know like a standard or uh, it is it is having <coughs> high stability compared to x5r okay so you can see x5r is draining a lot but x7r is not uh, you know like degrading very easily okay However, uh, the input capacitor we can utilized. Uh, you can we we can utilize electric uh, electrolytic capacitor also. Okay, uh, with you know like a ceramic capacitor. So this in this way we can reduce our ESR value because e electrolytic aluminium electrolytic capacitor will be having high ESR values. So at that time. Uh, we can utilize some ceramic capacitors with lower values like 0.1 microfarad or something like that and in that way we can reduce the parallel combination of uh, uh, ESR values which will be a lower value got it coming back to the output capacitor same way we can utilize either uh, ceramic capacitors or tantalum capacitor even electrolytic capacitor in, in addition with uh, parallel uh, 
ceramic capacitor so i have used electrolytic capacitor because we needed little bit higher values of capacitance okay like let's say uh, 100 microfarad we need or 220 microfarad we need because we want to you know like load the uh, output with higher current rate okay okay coming back to the enable pins enable pin setting so in enable pin setting if you do not need any under voltage lockout or over voltage lockout okay then you can directly uh, you know like connect your enable pin to the input pin okay so there is no need to change anything like this enable pin directly can be connected to the input pin all right otherwise suppose you don't want your system to start let's say 36 volt then you can keep a uh, you know like a uh, uh, bin value at 36 volt by designing here so you can keep v enable v input enable then what will happen is v input you set it to 36 volt is equal to 1 plus choose a value of r3 let's say 100k and accordingly r4 will be calculated based on this particular uh, formula okay so this is how this is how be setting the lowest voltage that will be a starting to give you the output of uh, you know like uh, uh, this particular IC is 36 volt got it and if you do not want to have appear like this then you can directly connect your in uh, enable pin to the input voltage okay there there there, there is a uh, hysteresis as well so that helps you to design it one more thing is uh, we can have reverse input protection so reverse input protection you can put one uh, diode here so at the input we can put diode and this will uh, you know like uh, serve the reverse protection circuit <coughs> the, like it will not allow uh, the current flowing in the opposite direction at all okay so this is how you can see uh, in this particular data set you can have a very good understanding of like uh, uh, this 10 pin package what is the PCB layout recommendation okay so you can see uh, <coughs> uh, this particular IC is having you know like uh, uh, output voltage with a little bit bigger copper areas and we have capacitor here and inductor here okay then you can see uh, these are the 10 pins uh, so like this particular 10 pin and uh, 5 pin and 5 pin total 10 pin are there and we have enable voltage input voltage and we have uh, RT PZ and you know like uh, uh, this is I think sync pin so all these things are there okay so based on this this is input voltage with having little bit higher capacitance so you can see uh, they have utilized input voltage with uh, capacitance here and electrolytic capacitor is used at the input also okay similar to that uh, the output capacitance uh, like output uh, inductor with output capacitor is this one so more capacitor I have used to have a uh, you know like a better understanding of uh, better capability of output okay so that's the understanding this was 10 pin uh, similar to that 16 pin package MSOP is also given so this is exactly same as 10 pin so there is no difference at all <coughs> now for our convenience uh, they have given a typical schematic as well directly you can utilize this okay so 3.3 volt output with 400 kilohertz uh, frequency setting so if you want to have a change let's say input voltage is let's say uh, 12 volt and you want output voltage with 3.3 volt coming back to the uh, <coughs> RT like uh, uh, I mean uh, switching frequency setting if you want you can uh, increase the switching frequency so that you can uh, reduce the L value okay so L value reduces what happens is if switching frequency goes high the inductor values goes low okay so if you want to make it let's say 66.6 uh, uh, kilo ohm then it will work around 700 kilohertz okay <coughs> and this way you can reduce your L values coming back to the 3.3 uh, volt setting so for that you have to utilize this R1 and R2 which is 1 mega ohm and 316 kilo ohm based on the formula that I just now told you got it like let's say this is my R1 this is my R2 so what was that R1 is equal to R2 times V out by 0 0.8 minus 1 okay so with this formula you can put your R2 value as 316 kilo ohm and this way you will get your R1 values okay so our application was actually required with 12 volt 
so this 12 volt converter uh, as you can see we have the input voltage rating from 13 volt to uh, 60 volt so our input was 48 volt and we have used uh, uh, electrolytic capacitors as well okay and then in addition to some ceramic capacitors with some uh, decoupling capacitor as well like 0.1 microfarad this is always recommended and then we have the output PC I don't have I have not used we have left it open then BST capacitor is there then we have the inductor value so I have used a, uh, like 33 micro Henry <coughs> then we have same values of uh, resistor there was no need to change anything we have the same uh, frequency setting with uh, 700 kilohertz that is not a problem okay and at output I have used a uh, electrolytic capacitor as well so that I can increase the capacity of the output got it so this was all about the buck converter now quickly let's talk about uh, linear converter linear regulator so linear regulator this is automotive grade regulator that I have used with 500 milliampere capacity and up to 40 uh, volt input capacity okay so my input is 12 volt going to go to output with 5 volt 500 milliamperes okay quickly uh, in this document what we did is like we have the product page which is ti.com and we have the data sheet as well coming back to the uh, you know like a parameter so you can see this is AEC qualified with temperature grade from minus 40 degree to 125 degree centigrade okay we have the input range from 3 volt to uh, 40 volt and we have the output range from 3.3 volt and 5 volt fixed okay so this is a very good IC you don't have to do any settings or something it is coming with uh, fixed output setting with uh, 5 volt got it it has very good accuracy with plus minus 1.15 percent and very low dropout so that is not a, our concern like even if it drops a little more that doesn't matter okay we have an excellent transient response with plus minus 2 percent V out deviation during cold crank and uh, all these things are there and uh, stable with 2.2 microfarad or larger capacitor so I have used little bit higher capacitor electrolytic which will be giving you the good stability and it is coming up in a T20 package which is having very good uh, thermal uh, dissipation capabilities as well okay some of the parameters that you can see here like we have I out maximum V in maximum V in max minimum V out maximum is there 5 volt and 3.3 volt so two options are there 3.3 volt option and 5 volt option is also there we have very less noise which is just 280 micro uh, volt RMS we have quotient current very less which is around 17 micro ampere and thermal resistance is very good which is coming up around 30 degree per watt okay so this is how lot of this thing is there at, at the same time you can see we have a very good uh, uh, PSRR which is 65 dB and very good accuracy which is less than 2 percent which is like way higher and operating temperature range is up to 150 degree centigrade so this is very good you can see several uh, you know like application is also there like you, you, you can utilize this particular IC in a reconfigurable instrument cluster body control modules and we have automotive gateways and remote keyless in entries okay so this is how <coughs> we can utilize have this uh, particular circuit application typical application you can see just a you know like entry diode with one input capacitor and one output capacitor you have the V output and this was your V input okay very simple circuit very simple to design and nothing to take care of much so this is the way it looks like like we have the input pin okay we have the ground pin we have the output pin so ground pin is actually not touching the uh, pad so this thermal pad will be touching it so you can utilize this thermal for your ground application uh, if you see, see quickly uh, we have the ground pin which is ground connected here it is input pin so input pin uh, you know like full description is there output pin is there so like that so we don't have to worry about right now with this uh, output capacitor you can see like we can utilize electrolytic capacitor decouple with 100 nanofarad ceramic capacitor so that it gives you good stability however ceramic capacitor is more than enough to be utilized with this particular application <coughs> coming back to the uh, functional block diagram so we have input we have the 
linear regulator that works way well, like it is error amplifier i think i have taught you guys several times i have explained you guys like how it works uh, i mean linear regulator how it stabilizes the output voltage okay so this is your v out okay <coughs> coming back to the uh, design part so design part if you see we have the power dissipation so power dissipation was very very important okay so that's the reason i have given you a complete calculation here so power dissipation is nothing but this was my you know like input and this is my output so what is the difference between these two so v input minus v output into i out is your power dissipated across the ic got it so this particular ic will be dissipating this much energy and that power will be uh, you know like uh, dissipated as a heat that we have to calculate like what is the junction temperature at that particular uh, you know like input <coughs> So since we had 12 volt input and 5 volt output and 500 milliamperes uh, of current output, so you can see the power dissipation across the IC is 3.5 watt. The junction to uh, like ambient uh, <coughs> thermal resistance was 30 degree centigrade. So in that case, the temperature rise will be uh, 3.5 times the you know like junction to ambient thermal resistance. So that will be 105 degree centigrade. So the, let's say the environment temperature is 25 degree centigrade. So it is reaching up to 130 degree centigrade. But this is never the case. You will not have this much drop across this. So you, you don't have to worry about because I output may be taken as 0.1 ampere. So at that time it will be just, uh, you know, like uh, 0.35. Uh, I mean, 0.1 means like it will be very less. Okay just 0.7 watt okay so 0.7 watt is very uh, you know like nominal values <coughs> coming back to the design process so design process input capacitor you can utilize uh, you know like a decoupling capacitor of one microfarad also it will be stable but we have used little bit higher value so that it gives you the maximum uh, you know like uh, stability and output capacitor it can take up to 2.2 microfarad to 200 microfarad okay and you have to make sure the ESR range is uh, you know like uh, uh, below 2 ohm so that's the reason what I have done is I have utilized um, electrolytic capacitor in addition to parallel ceramic capacitor so that my ESR rating increases ESR uh, value decreases okay this is the layout example so this is my uh, TO252 package uh, my IC okay so you can see <coughs> we have input we have ground and we have output and this is the tab so tab below tab you can put a, a you know like a mesh viage so that it dissipates it properly okay <coughs> coming back to the ordering information so this is the part numbering that uh, that is the way it has to be you know like numbered so tps 7 b 88 xx so xx is going to give you like let's say 33 is 3.3 volt 50 is 5.0 volt so you can put 50 and then rest other values so this is the part number that you can utilize or otherwise one more part number is given which is uh, this one uh, which is like a q then after that r2 is also available okay so with this r2 you can see the operating temperature is increased and without r2 it is up to 125 degree centigrade <coughs> okay good so coming back to the uh, circuit that we have implemented in our board so this is the 48 volt input and this is 12 volt output with this particular ic that i just now explained you uh, this is the worth electronics uh, inductor number that if you want you can utilize this and we have input voltage uh, 12 volt that is coming from the here itself for several infotainment uses or several other applications in that electric vehicle and hybrid vehicles okay and this is going to give you 5 volt output which will be of 500 milliampere capabilities so let me specify the ratings of all the capacitors so like 220 microfarad at the input i have utilized so in that case what you can do is this you keep minimum 100 volt rating so all the input capacitor keep minimum 100 volt ratings okay that is a one thing uh, if you want you can reduce this value to 100 microfarad also so that is not a problem it will work proper not a problem the 
coming back to the output capacitor so output capacitor uh, you can utilize uh, rating up to around 35 volts so let's say 2 to and 220 microfarad with 35 volt ratings is enough so all these 10 microfarad 1 microfarad 0.1 microfarad 0.1 microfarad 50 volt is abundantly available so you can utilize 50 volt rest other you can utilize up to 35 volt rating minimum uh, it will work with uh, like 25 volt rating also but uh, i'll suggest ahead with 35 volt because the derating uh, curve is bit better for 35 volts <coughs> coming back to 12 volt input here so same uh, this three capacitor 35 volt rating you can utilize as this one okay so 35 volt rating with 100 microfarad capacitor and 10 microfarad capacitor and 0.1 microfarad you can utilize 50 volt rating this 5 volt if you want you can continue with the same <coughs> capacitor rating <coughs> which is 35 volt otherwise if you want you can reduce it to uh, let's say 25 volt also okay but uh, to reduce the bomb cost or bomb line suggest you to keep the same voltage rating uh, so it will uh, reduce your overall cost as well so already guys hope you have a good understanding and you you, you may be able to utilize this particular application in your uh, automotive system design uh, for two step uh, regulators which is coming up from 48 volt to 12 volt and from 12 volt to 5 volt i have <coughs> another set of you know like a uh, uh, design as well uh, from 48 volt to 12 volt and 12 volt to 5 volt with very low cost okay so <coughs> which will be used in you know like electric vehicles because uh, their uh, you know like uh, cost competition is very high and this is kind of like premier solution premium solution so this premium solution will be utilized in your you know like a higher end vehicle or something like that so all right if you do have any questions or any queries regarding the complete uh, design of this particular uh, dc dc converter for your electric vehicle design then you can uh, put down your queries in the comment box or reach out to us and we shall be able to uh, give you the answers as soon as possible thank you